بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television, Farsi Headlines. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos confirms Al Nu'man Order First Class on His Excellency, the Ambassador of Jordan. Forty plots of commercial and industrial land to be distributed for SME owners before the end of the year. And the Ministry of Health stresses reducing medicine prices next year and launches health services guidelines for the private health institutions. Those were the headlines. Now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said confirmed Al Nu'man Order First Class on His Excellency Mut'ab Wasyus Al Zabin, Ambassador of Jordan to the Sultanate, in appreciation of his good efforts in serving the relations binding the two brotherly countries. The order was handed over to the Ambassador by His Highness Sayyid Asad bin Tariq Al Said when he received him in his office here this morning. His Excellency General Sultan bin Mohammed al Nu'mani, Minister of Royal Office, received His Excellency Wolf Jio Hong, Ambassador of China, accredited to the Sultanate to bid him farewell at the end of his mission. During the meeting, Ambassador expressed his pride and gratitude to the care given by all officials in the Sultanate. The Minister of Royal Office thanked the Ambassador for the efforts exerted to enhance existing bilateral relations between the Sultanate and friendly China in all fields. His Excellency General Sultan bin Mohammed al Nu'mani, Minister of Royal Office, received His Excellency Ambassador Karim Akaratli of Turkey, accredited to the Sultanate. During the meeting, they discussed bilateral relations between the two friendly countries, in addition to review common interests and matters of mutual concern. The Public Authority for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Development stressed that currently it has completed procedures related to granting commercial and industrial lands for SME owners in various governorates of the Sultanate after allocated them by the Ministry of Housing. The authority clarified in the statement of Oman Daily newspaper that it finished controls for granting lands and it is completely like other procedures related to the mechanism of distributing them to a huge number of entrepreneurs according to their activities and needs, pointing that it is expected to start distribution of 35 to 40 lands before the end of this year with nominal amounts that guarantee them the right to use the land. The Ministry of Health launched Health Services Guideline for the private health institutions in the Sultanate. The guideline will include data of these institutions. It aimed to provide better health services through reaching the services provider easily. His Excellency Dr. Sultan bin Yarub Al Busaidi, advisor of Ministry of Health for Health Affairs, launched the guideline. The Ministry of Health stressed that the medicine prices in the Sultanate will start decreasing during 2015, which will reach not more than 45% of the profits. The Ministry explained that this decrease will include a number of medicines, such as the medicines of heart diseases, circulatory, endocrinology diseases, musculature treatment, and dermatology, while the other medicines will be decreased according to the studied plan. Still to come in our news bulletin. Port of Salala occupies a third place at the level of Europe, Middle East and Africa in birth productivity. من هنا تبدأ أسطر الحكاية. تقاليدها راسخة كالجبال أصالتها مضرب مثل في كل مكان بساطتها ليس لا مثيل لا حدود لكرمها حاضرها مشرق متجدد مهرجان الصلالة السياحي 2014 من الثلاثين من يوليو إلى السادس من سبتمبر
Israeli airstrikes killed at least five Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, and activists kept up their rocket fire on southern Israel today, as Egypt pressed on with efforts to broker a durable truce. Gazan said that they received now recorded messages on mobile phones and landlines saying Israel would target any house used to launch terror attacks, and telling civilians to leave areas used by activists. Israeli aircraft attacked four homes in the Gaza town of Beit Lahia near the Israeli border, killing two women and a girl. Locals said a member of the Hamas activist group that dominates Gaza lived in one of the dwellings. Separate attacks elsewhere in the Gaza Strip killed two other Palestinians. Activists launched about 40 rockets at southern Israel today, causing no casualties. Syria said today it would cooperate in any international efforts to flight militants in the country after Washington signaled it was considering extending the battle against the group into Syrian territory. Foreign Minister Walid al muallim presented his country as a vital partner in the war against militants who seized wide areas of Syria and Iraq. Muallim said in a televised news conference that Syria, geographically and operationally, is a center of the international coalition to fight the militants. Asked about the prospect of U.S. air strikes against them inside Syria, Muallim said his government was ready to cooperate with any country fighting militants, adding that any air raids mounted without Damascus approval would be viewed as hostile acts. Anything outside this cooperation is considered aggression. Libya wants the international community to help protect its oil fields, airports, and other state assets, as it is too weak to stop armed groups fighting for control, its ambassador in Cairo said today. The plea came as attackers fired grad rockets at Labrach Airport in eastern Libya, targeting one of the country's few functioning air hubs. Western powers and Libya's neighbors fear the OPEC producer will slide into civil war, and former rebels have turned their guns on each other. Rival factions have turned the capital, Tripoli, and the main eastern city, Benghazi, into battlegrounds, forcing the United Nations and embassies to evacuate their staff and citizens. Senior officials in a freshly elected parliament have relocated to Tobruk in the far east to escape the violence. Egyptian foreign minister told the meeting that Libya needed a ceasefire of all armed factions and a national dialogue to overcome its deep divisions. Iraq's Prime Ministry designate Haider al abadi today predicted a clear vision on a new government would emerge within the next two days. Abadi is tasked with forming a power-sharing administration that can ease tensions and counter IS militants. He said the latest talks on the structure of the government had been constructive. Shortly after Abadi spoke, a suicide bomb attack in a mosque in Baghdad killed at least nine people and wounded 21. The attacker donated his suicide bomb vest inside the mosque in the new Baghdad district of the capital at prayer time. In his comments, Abedi also emphasized that the central government will not tolerate armed groups operating outside government control. Exchanging views on cooperation in the military field were the center of discussion during the meeting between His Excellency Mohammed bin Nasser al rasbi Secretary General of the Ministry of Defense, and Major General B. Singh, Senior Instructor at the National Defense College in India. They also reviewed good relations binding the Sultanate and India and a number of issues of joint concern. Air Vice Marshal Matar bin Ali al ubaidani commander of the Royal Air Force of Oman, also reviewed with a delegation of National Defense College in India the cooperation field in the military training and academy between the two countries. The strategic location on international marine routes has made Port of Salalah one of the most significant ports in the world. The port handles more than 3 million containers annually. It occupies a third place at the level of Europe, Middle East and Africa, and 15th globally in terms of birth productivity, as per the research, issued by business magazine Journal of Commerce. This came as a result of achieving an average of 91 gross moves per hour in 2013, with an increase of 26% compared to 2012. Employees in charge of the port seek to improve the production processes. The port reduced waiting times at the gate from over 70 minutes to 30 minutes and decreased breakdowns and downtimes. The port is received by many countries as the best port that enabled them to reach the Middle East, Indian Peninsula and East Africa due to its strategic location. 
As millions of French children prepare to return to school this September, many in the country's Roma community won't have a class to attend. The following report details the reasons. This abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of Paris is home to dozens of Roma families. But they could be evicted any day. Even the rumor of a police raid causes confusion and panic, prompting some parents to take their children elsewhere. Ten-year-old Morella is one of the youngsters living here who should be preparing for school. But last year she only attended class for a few months. And this year doesn't look much better. I'm not looking for a school because I don't know how long the police will let us stay here. If they let us stay, I'll look for a school. If they don't let us stay, I won't. Over half of Roma children in France don't go to school, sometimes because their parents don't send them and sometimes because schools refuse them admittance. Research by the European Roma Rights Centre found that schools often hide behind paperwork to avoid having to teach Roma children. 60% of the parents of these children said that the children don't go to school because they were refused enrollment or they were put on a waiting list for public school. And when I say waiting list, it's a waiting list that doesn't exist. That's why Jean-Pierre, a volunteer with Secure Catholique, is working both with schools and Roma communities to try to change attitudes. So far, he's managed to get school places for all these children in Triel sur Seine. And he's persuaded Roma families to prioritize education by providing a small children's library and a free school bus service. The parents have other priorities like food or clothing that come before school. Little by little, by working hard, we've shown them that school is important for them and for their future. Now they understand, and today we can say that all the children go to school. Back at the warehouse, there are few preparations for the new school year. But activists say these kids need to go to have a shot at a better life. Now for the general weather forecast. Cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of the Far and nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. Rest of the Sultanate will have clear to partly cloudy skies with chances of scattered rain over parts of the Hajar Mountains. Winds will be southerly to southwesterly moderate to active along the coast of the Arabian Sea, while it will be southeasterly to easterly light to moderate over the rest of the Sultanate. Seas along the coastal areas of Arabian Sea will be rough with a maximum wave height of 3.5 meters and along the rest of the coast it will be slight to moderate with a maximum wave height of 1.5 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos confirms a Norman order first class on His Excellency the Ambassador of Jordan. Forty plots of commercial and industrial land to be distributed for SME owners before the end of the year. And the Ministry of Health stresses reducing medicine prices next year and launches health services guidelines for the private health institutions. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.